It began a couple of years ago when I started modifying KR box switches with 3D printed resin stems so they could be used with Atari XC vintage keycaps. Since then, thanks to a lot of feedback and help from the wonderful Atari 8-bit community, and from Excel Freak in particular, I've been designing, building and selling entirely new drop-in replacement mechanical keyboards for each model of 8-bit computer Atari has ever put on the market. The last two models remaining were the older models, the Atari 400 and 800. The 400 in particular was very challenging. The original keyboard is a flat membrane affair, similar to the Timex Sinclair ZX81 abomination of a text entry device. It doesn't just have terrible ergonomy, its keys are also way smaller than standard MX keys. The 400 case also has only room for that very thin object. So the bulk of a mechanical keyboard has to be outside the case. There have been other attempts to mount mechanical keyboards in the 400, but the size constraints resulted in truly bizarre layouts. The breakthrough for the decent 400 keyboard came when we realized that there is some wiggle room in the spacing between keys. This is a trick we used in reverse for the XR keyboard, where the space between keys is imperceptibly wider in order to feel the wider footprint of the original keyboard in those machines. Here, we could reduce the space between keys imperceptibly in order to fit more keys in the smaller width of the 400 keyboard. Once we did that, we were able to save enough space to fit a relatively natural layout. We even have a wide backspace key, wide shift keys, two control keys, and the return key where it belongs. The only weirdness is that we had to move the leftmost keys, escape and tabulation, to the bottom row. Break is also moved there, positioned so it's unlikely you'll hit it by mistake. So yeah, it's narrower, but still has all you need. As for the backlighting, since all decent keyboards have blue adjustable backlighting, and since there is no power line on the Atari 400 keyboard connector, I had to tap power from the power board and route that to the keyboard. So yeah, that's the 400 keyboard. It works pretty great. Oh, and just one last thing. What about the 400? The 400, the miniature Atari 400 replica that came out at the beginning of this year. Well, that one has USB ports in front and in the back, and it supports USB keyboard. So I built a 3D printed enclosure for a previous design for a full-size Decent 400 keyboard. I added a Pipico based USB adapter, and voila, a Decent keyboard for the 400. Um, this, by the way, we also work fine on emulators, and I suppose on a 1088 XEL. Let's switch now to the most recent Decent keyboard, the Decent 800. So this one was relatively easy to design. The only strangeness comes from the unusual non-rectangular footprint. Notice how there is a different width for the top two rows and the middle two rows. Um, yeah, so the keyboard is held in place under the top of the case with 3D printed parts that attach on top of the existing plastic columns inside that case. Um, and like for the 400, we had to tap a power source from uh, the power board for the backlighting. And that's pretty much it. This is the Decent 800 keyboard for the Atari 800, and it completes the collection. There is now a Decent keyboard for every Atari 8-bit computer. Um, I, I, I think now I need to start working on the Atari ST and the Falcon. So yeah, stay tuned, I guess.